Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm sharing with you a collaboration video that is being hosted by Jim at Jim's Kitch Kitchen. He has great food content on his channel. Very entertaining. I know you will love him as much as we do. So please be sure to go and check his channel out. The link will be down below in the description box, along with a playlist of all my YouTube friends making some delicious recipes for this banana collaboration. In today's video, I'm going to be making two banana recipes that I think you and your family will absolutely enjoy as much as we did. So come along and see what I made. And the first recipe is a banana French toast casserole. So basically kind of like a bread pudding sort of. And it does have steps. So this is the first step, which is the brown sugar uh, banana filling. So we're going to do this first. And I didn't want to put everything on the counter at once because it was just a lot. And I didn't want to confuse you with everything or overwhelm you, which could overwhelm me as well. <laughs> so for this, it's very simple and easy ingredients and doesn't take a lot of time to make either. But you will need three ripe bananas, but you want them to be firm. So you don't want like an overripe banana, but ripe and six tablespoons of unsalted butter, two tablespoons of pure maple syrup, three fourth cup of brown sugar, light brown sugar packed, and you will also need just a pinch of salt. And now I'm gonna show you how to put this portion together. So in a skillet, you wanna just melt the six tablespoons of butter, then add the brown sugar, and I like to mix this until that butter uh, coats it really well. But you also want to kind of melt that, you know, sugar into that butter. Then add the maple syrup. And same thing, you want to just mix this in until everything is thoroughly incorporated. But you also want this to be more of a smooth consistency. So try to get the sugar to melt down a little bit. And it shouldn't take very long and I don't do this on a high high heat add your pinch of salt stir that in now carefully add the bananas to that sauce you don't want to break them up or anything you kind of want to leave them whole but these were not overripe either so that helped a lot so that's why you don't want to use overripe bananas but turn make sure that the stove is off when you add them and then you're just going to coat these thoroughly and then you will put this to the side and let this come to room temperature. Now the next step, step two, is the French toast preparation. Very simple and easy to do. So I'm using Risen's uh, French bread. This is a New Orleans uh, French bread and the recipe called for 15 ounces. This is 10 ounces but that was perfectly fine. Um, I'll let you know now, the 10 ounces worked great. So this, I just cubed them up into large pieces and you do want it to be a little stale. Also eight large eggs. You'll need one cup of whole milk. That's what I have in this measuring cup, but you also will need one cup of half and half. And I just wanted to use the same cup instead of dirtying up another one. So you will need to add another, you know, cup of the half and half. Two uh, tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. And now I'm going to show you how this gets put together. Add those eight eggs to your bowl and then just whisk them until you break them up. And I like to use a whisk. You can use a fork, whatever you want to use. Add the whole milk. And then you're going to add the one cup of half and half. And then continue to whisk this until everything is completely combined. Now add the brown sugar and you may have to break it up a little bit. I know mine sat out for a little while. But once you add that in, then you're going to add the cinnamon. Then add the vanilla extract. And I'm just topping it off because I wanted to make sure I had that full tablespoon. Then I just took the whisk again and then 
just mixed it in. You want to thoroughly try to get that cinnamon. I always find cinnamon's hard to mix in with things like this, but just mix it up. And then I took a nine by 13 inch oven safe baking dish and put my bread in there. But before I did that, I sprayed it with some nonstick spray. So make sure to do that so it's easier to, you know, get this out of the pan. And I took half of the bread. I didn't use all of it. So one layer and that fit perfectly. Then I'm gonna take half of that banana mixture and just spread it out on top of the bread. And I try to get it a, a little bit of banana and sauce on each of the pieces as much as possible. Um, it's a little hard trying to do that, but I think I managed to get it. And then the next thing you will do is take the rest of the bread and just lay it on top. If you want, you could put some of the egg mixture, but I'm just doing doing it this way, and it turned out fine. So put the rest of the bread on top of that banana mixture. And then I just layered the rest of the banana sauce mixture over that. So now I'm going to add that egg mixture over top, and I want to try to get that on all of the bread as much as possible. So I kind of start, you know, towards like getting it in the middle and then I try to get to the sides and everything. So just to try to fully coat the bread as much as you can. And in the recipe, I believe, so I'm kind of doing it backwards, but I believe they had put the custard, you know, this egg mixture on first, and then they put the rest of the banana on top. It really doesn't matter, honestly. Uh, it turned out fine. So just however you want to do it, <laughs> you can do it. But I just felt like this was just the easiest way just to top it off with that egg. Then just take a spoon and gently uh, press that bread into the egg mixture. I try to focus on the corners because I find that that's kind of the areas where it'll stay a little dry. But you can also um, tilt it just a little bit just to kind of get the egg mixture to kind of flow to the other side a little bit if there's not, you know, if it's staying in one spot. Cover this and then let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. I believe you can do it maybe after four hours, but I think it's best if you let it sit overnight. I find that all of those flavors and it also gives it time for the egg mixture to soak up in the bread. Now the third step is the topping. You will need a third cup of all-purpose flour, a third cup of light brown sugar, then you need a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon, and a pinch of salt. You will also need three tablespoons of unsalted butter softened. So just, you know, try to break up the brown sugar. This one sat out for a little bit as well. You want to just mix all of this in. So all of that just goes into one little bowl. And once you have that all combined, add the butter and at first it called for using a spoon to mix this up that didn't really work out that great so i just decided not to use the spoon for this and just use my fingers and mixed it up really well and that worked out great so you want to get a wet sand consistency as you can see here and put that in the refriger refrigerator overnight as well so the next morning i took it out and I'm gonna take that crumb, crumbly uh, brown sugar mixture and put that over the top and then put this in the oven on 350 between 40 and 55 minutes. You just don't want it to be, you know, soupy or anything. I, cook, I baked mine for 40 minutes and it came out perfect. The toothpick came out perfectly. And this is what it looks like when it came out of the oven so it kind of browns up a little bit and this is what it looks like plated this was really really good really enjoyed this very nice cake um, french toast <laughs> banana french toast and if you want you can serve it with either a caramel sauce on top 
or some, you know, more maple syrup over it. And I decided to go with the caramel sauce. So I just kind of drizzled it over the top. This was really, really delicious. Really enjoyed this one. I think it's definitely one that you should make for your family. I think they would enjoy it as well. And it's a very easy meal. It's a lot of steps, but it's really quick. Now this next one is a banana salsa. Yes, it's from the Southern Living Cookbook that a very sweet friend of mine gave me because she went to a thrift store and she saw these and I didn't have the, this particular year and she bought me a few of them. So I was so thankful for having these. Uh, so I really appreciate her buying those for me. And it worked out because I could use this recipe for this collab. So you need two ripe bananas, but firm bananas, so not overripe. Three green onions chopped up, a half a cup of green bell pepper, a half a cup of a, of a red bell pepper, a fourth of a teaspoon of pepper and a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of parsley. It called for cilantro. I'm just not a fan of cilantro, so I used parsley instead. Two tablespoons of brown sugar, light brown sugar, and it's optional, but a small jalapeno pepper, and we just love jalapenos, so had to add that in. One tablespoon of oil, and three tablespoons of lime juice, and that is it for this particular one. And I just wanted to show you the recipe here, and it was actually for like a banana um, to put on, a, you know, fish. I didn't really like that idea too much, but <laughs> I like the idea of the salsa. And this was a picture in the cookbook that I wanted to show you so you can kind of see what it is. And now I'm going to show you how quick and easy this one is to put together though. And all you need is to chop up your bananas, put them in a bowl, and then add your bell peppers. Add the green onions. Add the jalapenos if you're going to add them. I do think it adds a little bit to it. And then I'm going to add the brown sugar. And like I said, you can't really get much easier than this. Add the oil. Add the lime juice. And then add the salt and pepper and the parsley or the cilantro if you're adding that. And then just add it to your bowl. Mix all of this up until it's completely combined. And I did cut the bananas into like fours. So I sliced them and then cut them into four little pieces and little chunks. But you definitely don't wanna use overripe bananas for this, but just mix it up. And then you're gonna cover this and put it in the refrigerator just for a few hours to get those flavors to meld together. Well, I have to say, I am very pleased with this recipe. I am pleasantly surprised at how good it tastes. I absolutely love uh, peach mango salsa, and I was hoping this would kind of be a twist on that, and it is. So it was really delicious. The bananas worked out great in this, and like I said, make sure you don't use overly ripe uh, bananas. These were perfect. And I think it would probably last maybe two or three days in the refrigerator um, since it has lime juice in it to preserve those bananas a little bit. But very good. So if you like salsas, this is definitely one to try. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And please don't forget to check Jim's channel along with the playlist down below. I hope that everyone has a blessed day. And I thank y'all so much for watching. God bless y'all.